Oh, what did I do here? I switch you guys around. <laughs> What's up, man? It's been a long, grueling week for me. It's a a very long week, actually. Uh, a lot of work to do. I'm going on a couple trips. The store's busy. Just usually it's busy for me like this. Uh, because I would just do the trade shows, but now with the store, it's uh, it's it's insane, man. And my full time job, it's going well. Finley, thanks for for tuning in. I'm actually, I got home super late from work. I had to go in the office today. Now, as soon as I get home, catching up with the orders, and I'm editing a video for you guys, and I'm way behind way behind on the lives uh i got uh, on the videos i got some pretty cool footage coming i think some of my best to be honest with you i mean i don't know i think it's some of my best uh that i'm looking at you guys i don't know if you guys can see here a little bit i got the graph here you see the fish show up up there boom Hard to see, but anyway, you guys will see in the video. Um, but anyway, yeah, man. So, listen, guys, that's the question I get the most about the store, guys. I'm a busy guy, I love you guys to death. I can't thank you guys enough for the support. I created the store for guys, especially. Uh, is that Aaron's sweater? No, that's mine. I get him in Mexico. Uh, I created that store for for guys like me, uh, that guys that are busy, that like to go fishing. I can't be at the fishing store all the time. I'd rather order online, get the stuff that I need. It's hard to find the stuff I need online. But to me, the $12 shipping is very inexpensive because it saved me time during my day. It saved me from going to the store, saved me gas. I show up, my stuff's there, I'm all happy. It's $12, guys, the minute the shipping gets cheaper, I'll pass it back along, trust me. Uh, so far, we almost break even on the shipping. So, it's $12, grab whatever you can. We have some of the cheapest price out there, you can go compare yourself to other places. You grab a couple pack of Drifter, you can buy them somewhere else, you're gonna save money. Uh, you get exclusive stuff like that. So, guys, I cannot meet with you guys. I would love to meet with all of you. Unfortunately, there's no meetup. I have no time to meet anybody. Uh, for myself, I would have no time. I, it's, I get that question asked 20, 30 times a day. So, um, yeah, the hats are in. You guys, I question how to break down a spot. That's a pretty good question, man. Uh, uh, Breaking down the spot is time. Putting time. Uh, how's that Aaron's hoodie? I bought it in Mexico. Does he have the same hoodie as me? Maybe he stole my Mexico. Or maybe I gave him one from Mexico. I can't remember. That's mine, man. That's man size. I had it for a while, man. <laughs> Aaron's hoodies? I don't know, man. That's my hoodie. Somebody call him. Somebody put him on there. Thanks, Darren. I appreciate it, man. So anyway, uh, breaking down a spot, man, you got to spend some time on it and understanding where the fish are going. But it's uh, it's been lately, those spots that used to be good are, ch are changing so much and so much and so much. Sometimes they're not on that spot. They're in a, a different area with the same bottom. Man, there's whitefish everywhere. Everywhere. You want to catch whitefish right now? Just drill a hole. I, I wouldn't be surprised guys are catching them in five feet of water. There's whitefish everywhere. It's, it's littered with the lake right now. It's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But right now, guys, you shouldn't have an issue finding fish. Getting them to bite might be a different thing. You know, uh, one thing I learned a lot this year is... Uh, Oh man, I got a soup on the oven. Oh my god. Hold on. Forgot I was cooking soup. Alright, you guys are coming with me. 
But anyway, so breaking down the lake or breaking down a spot, there's different areas on your spot and there's different areas on your spot that's going to produce more fish at certain time of the day. You have to spend time out there and figure it out yourself. Uh, but for me, I like to fish. I like to see what I'm fishing. The bottom wise, if I'm fishing shallow for whitefish, I don't like fishing for whitefish deep. I find it not as fun. My soup is done. And uh, I'll move around the spot and see where there's transition. I like fishing transition, a bit cleaner bottom because I'm, I'm, I'm using a camera. So I'll, uh, I'll look for that. Guys, I'm predicting, I'm predict, I'm predicting it. It's, it's done. This is getting broken this weekend. If, if this record's being broken in Ontario, it'll be this weekend or in the next week on Lake Simcoe. It's full moon. It's prime white, uh, prime burbot uh, season right now. They're spawning. It's going to get beaten in the next couple of years or maybe this weekend. That'd be cool. Guys, if you do catch the big ones like this, and, and every time I watch this fish, man, I'm super thankful. I uh, feel bad for killing it. I always ask myself if I was to catch another one, would I release it? That's a big female full of eggs. So I feel awful, but the good thing is I gave it to science. They, they were able to give a lot of data. And you know what's really cool? Is the first lake trout I caught this year was tagged. And I called my buddy Will Wegman last week. I gave him all the information fairly quickly. And he called me back, to, uh, he messaged me back today. And he said, hey Sebastian, you wanna know some cool? I said, you, you know what Will, I'll be really impressed. She, she, she's from Georgian Bay. And uh, he said, no, it's not that impressive, but uh, he, your fish actually was captured in a net in December. So they've caught it in December, uh, just before the spawn or something like that. November, December, he didn't give me an exact date. And he said, where we've captured it, and he told me to keep that where they capture it quiet, so I'm not going to say anything. But it's completely opposite side of the lake from where I caught it. It's pretty cool. I think he was very impressed by that, but he, those fish, man, I bet you they could cover the lake in a couple days. But it's a big lake, but uh, it's, a, it's, it's a small lake for lake trout. And I bet you those fish, man, they can cover the lake. They got to cover the lake at least 50 times a year. It's a big lake, man. They don't stop swimming, so... It was pretty cool to know that this fish it didn't grow much, if at all. Casper's gonna expose nothing. He can bring his knees all day. Bro, you better put some sauce, you better eat it. Ain't exposing nothing. Uh, yeah, I gotta clean Burby though. She's, she's dirty. We'll have to wait and see. No, sir, Josh, it's not consistent enough for guiding for Burbit on Lake Simcoe yet. Casper, we should do a side by side. Winner gets stay, uh, loser gets stays, all right? But anyway, so breaking down, breaking down the spot, man, you got to fish. You know, that spot is different areas. And, and what do you call a spot? Is it 30 by 30? Is it a shoal? Is it a point? Is it a flat? You got to break down that spot. You got to spend a full day on it, understanding when the fish are going there and when they're coming back to it. Or are they in transition? Are they just passing right through? Are they chilling around? Are they coming to eat? Let's go, man. Let's go, Casper. But if I tase you, it's three seconds. Three seconds. The fish will be the fish will be eating on the shoal on the side of the shoal where there's a transition. That's where they're chilling and traveling. Uh, the meet and greet. I'm still looking at that. We're looking for May 17. I'll see what I can do with that. Um, some people that wanted to help don't want to help anymore. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I need IDs on videos on what to put out there because I find it boring, just the underwater footage and stuff like that. So I gotta find other ways, man. 
to utilize the drone and stuff like that. You're going to the right area, Justin. Nope, Scotch Bonnet Pepper Eating is on Sunday. Sunday, everybody's going to be here. I'm eating one. Josh is eating one. And uh, LB and Aaron are going to be looking. Not too shallow, no. The drifter has been key, steady for me. That's all I've been fishing with, man. Manual ice auger? Bro, I've had them. I've had them for the past six years out of eight years I've been fishing. You know, there's nothing wrong with manual auger until there's 30 inch. That's not fun. Ask your questions. Or I'm going to go back to editing. So... A uh, customer of me of mine posted and he caught the first bourbon at night with the glow set and it was a good one too. I fish a drifter like a means. No, I think I fish it a bit differently. Uh, but similarly, but you know, the thing is with a drifter, when they're coming up to eat it, you can still go up. I'm not trashing the Mies, guys. The Mies is a great tool. Uh, I've tried it. To me, my conferred zone is the Drifter. There's different styles. There's guys that like to take slap shot on hockey, and there's guys that they likes to take one timers. There's like that to take wrist shot, right? I'm a I'm a guy that likes to take a slap shot. You know, I like the Drifter, uh, but to me, to me, I'm I'm a cause and effect guy. If 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 I take this and I go like this. To me, it fell down because gravity points this way and I tossed it that way. I pushed it that way. You know, if I threw it that way, it went that way because of the energy of my arm. I'm a cause and effect guy. That's what I do for work. Uh, understanding cause and effect. Here we go. So we have a jig head right here. And let's say this is a Meigs. So a Meigs has a longer, so past here has a longer nose made to be pointed down. So the tail can stick up, which is great because it sticks up right like this and the fish comes and just sucks it in. It's right in the position it wants it to be. But if the fish is on a feeding up pattern or they're aggressive and I go up with my Meigs, the Meigs goes like this and it still has the jig up like this. It goes up like this. So as it goes up like this and the fish comes and eat the, the head first because that's what they want where the eyes are, you ain't getting no hookup. So that's a thing that kind of, it's not for me. Um, for that, I like the drifter better, just more simpler, I find. And but what you're holding good for the drift, I'm not sure your question, but I'm not sure your question. Repeat your question. You type like I talk, bro. Man, I've been, usually I'm pretty quick at editing videos, like 20 minutes max. Man, this video, I've been on it for an hour, it bugs me. I'm pretty quick usually. Fairly quick. So if you got some questions, guys, I can answer a couple questions. We're going to do this for half an hour. On your flash or graph, how do you tell between a whitefish and a lake trout? That's very... That's very easy to do uh, when you're deep, but when you're shallow, a lot of those lake trout will come in on bottom or way on top. So usually a lake trout will come in on top, the roaming middle of the water column. Some of them will be on bottom, but they react quicker. They're, they're in and out quicker. A lake trout will go out of the cone and come back quick. A whitefish usually are in group and they'll go down quicker. A lake trout goes up and, and, or goes down. They're very quickly um they react different i mean it's it's hard to tell anybody that's gonna say hey, unless they have a one of those live scope thing well, they can't tell you it's a lake trout right away all the time if you tell you they're liars so most of the time a lake trout will come in solo not all the time and they're much much quicker to react 
I need to plug in my phone. Give me a second. Repeat that, my friend. What depth? What's go to depth bays and point shoals? Any similar for any specific uh, reason? I'm not sure I understand your question. Just be be uh. I would go to depth bays. Man, it's just trial and error. A lot of trial and error, a lot of time on the lake. Some shoals look really good, but like I said right now, you can fish whatever shoals out there has whitefish. It doesn't matter where that shoal is. Whatever shoal you see on Lake Simcoe has fish. Look at a shoal this week. There's fish. It's on shore. There's fish. 20 foot of, of water on shore will have whitefish. If it's accessible, close. To, I mean, you can literally go out to Big Bay Point in 20 feet of water straight, drill a hole, catch whitefish. It's instant. It's, it's silly. What'd you say, LB? Uh, that the store, they're not with me. The coal batteries are holding up good, yep. Where do you recommend fishing camp and felt? Drill a hole in 100 feet of water, they're gonna show up. Snake Island, yeah, there's, there's lake trout on it. There's lake trout on it. A lot of them are going to spawn around those islands. Uh, I use 1 8 I'm patient enough. It's not an underwater camera, guys. It's a drone. We talked about this last time. That's it right here. That's the drone. I don't see the footage till I get home. How do I rig the drifter? I don't think I got any left here. I use a flatty jig head like this. It comes rigged up like this. Uh, I just took the thing off to show you guys last time. Give me a quick second. So you see this looking fire I got in the drifter. See this jig head right here? It's got a screw lock on here. That's a one eighth. Uh, these jig heads, they're flatty jig heads. They're on the Canadian Tackle Store.com. They're on special right now. You know, shipping might be $12, but everything's cheaper on there for a reason. So you screw in the screw lock on the drifter and you pierce it through in the middle so it sits flat. And your drifter is always going to sit flat like this, low profile. Mike Howard, that's a good question. Uh, so I signed up for the CSFL. Well, I sent in my email for reservation. We're going to CSFL again. I'm doing the Bass Cat Invitational which is pretty cool. Uh, wow, here it is. <clears throat> Which is pretty cool for me, Basket Invitational uh, 2017, second place. Biggest tournament I've ever been into. There's uh, just uh, 15 boats shy of 300. Um, so, just just shy of, of 300 boats is 285 boats and that weekend is a two-day tournament that weekend there was three other tournaments that had over 300 boats on them and it's a super pressured lake if you think lake simcoe is pressured on the winter that's nothing imagine what you see on the on family day on lake simcoe in the winter how many huts everywhere that's lake gunnersville but just tournament guys so it's insane the pressure they see all these fish have been caught and uh it's uh it was cool man so i finished sick second i traveled all the way there i got the other plate up there i'm not gonna take it off i got big bass on the first day uh 6.70 it was a massive fish that i just spawned out if i caught that with the eggs in or natural weight when she's 
you know, she's she was really skinny from just spawning out. I was like a nine, eight, nine pound fish all day, all day. Uh, but I caught it. I caught it on a big uh, ten inch worm, and she she had it down her throat. And it it was the first time I grabbed the fish. I put my hand in its throat, in its mouth, and I had I didn't need pliers. I just grabbed the hook from the like where the esophagus starts, and she had the worm in there. And I just usually you need pliers or you cut the hook because you can't reach down there. And I just grabbed the hook, turned it around, I had enough room to put two fists in there, and it was pretty cool. And I we like I said, it's super busy, and I caught it in front of two other boats that were 20 feet away. So um, that locked us in at Fort Place the first day. And the second day, uh, we got in there. And if you're able to catch five fish two days in a row on Lake Gunnersville, you're going to do well. So we had our limit uh, on the fifth day, but we broke at five and an eight pounder back to back. An eight pounder first, then the five pounder. And uh, if we had landed those fish, we would have finished second, but that's tournament fishing. No excuse there. I, it was a cool experience, man. But. Uh, yeah, so I'm working on a lot of stuff for you guys. I definitely want this uh, website and CanadianTacoStore.com to grow. It's Kim can't keep up with the orders. I'm not complaining. It's great. Um, my next video, Dylan, you're going to see. But you can see I got a how to fish whitefish. That's how I fished the white the, the drifter, right? Yeah, I see a lot of repeated question, guys. I don't blame you. You don't read all the comments. Uh, so if I skip your questions, it's probably because I've answered it. And no, this is not Aaron's hoodie. It's mine. And if he wants it, he can go and get it. No, I fished Big Gull Lake, yeah, for walleye and lake trout before, but ne never on the ice. Never on the ice. Once them goes locked up, it's hard to... Take me out of the, uh, take me out the Lake Simcoe, you know. There's gobies everywhere. Freaking right. That's why I invented the goby sauce. And it's legit, legit, legit goby stuff. It's, you can't make it, you can't, so... Depending on where you live in the country, some guys can catch gobies and kill them and eat them. In Ontario, you're not allowed to kill them. You're allowed to kill them, but you can't transport them dead or alive. In other provinces, you can transport them, but that's it. So you got to buy all the supplies out of the country, out of the well, some out of the country, some out of the province, and uh, yeah. So it's legit stuff, man. Like the warehouse we make this smells for days after we make it. Is disgusting. It's it's very 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 super hundred percent potent stuff. It comes in a in a in a in it's three point seven eight liters, so one gallon. And I put a cap just a little bit bigger of this of this high potent stuff into a twenty liter bucket, and I mix with amino acids and other stuff. Um, and food colorant and all that stuff and that little that that little thing will do over a hundred cent if not more it's insane how potent it is if i was to drop it in the warehouse it would smell for years they would think somebody died here well my opinion on scent they're all great. They don't attract the fish. They hold on better, and I've seen it this year. I've stung fish one, two, three times, and they, it's the same fish comes back and eats. It's nuts. But here's the thing. Nobody's got it in paste, and that's what I want. I want a paste that I can use year-round. I don't want a liquid because cause and effect. You put liquid, and it goes into the water. What happens? It separates right away so i want a paste like you can use my sauce and if you've used it on the drifter it comes out it's still on there so when you grab it you can feel it to me anyway i'm not knocking the liquid scent that to me that's my preference that's what i like 
beat the gulls. Those hats are pretty sick. We got about, I think we got a dozen left. A dozen left. So, you guys want to see some footage I'm working on? If I can see the drifter. No, you know, it, I fish with a sight hole. First of all, I do a sight hole for other reasons than fishing. Uh, I have to place the drone a certain way. And uh, I like seeing the fish. I like seeing aquarium. So, yes, I do have a sight hole and stuff like that. Mostly to know if there's a lake trout around. If there's a lake trout around, I want to see, be able to confirm what I'm seeing on the graph of the lake trout. I'm going to start fishing differently. I do look down the hole if I can see the whitefish now with the snow and all that stuff that's going to come and and the, and the, and the, and the, the warm weather the the water clarity is going to get worse and we're not going to have that chance to uh, sight fish them anymore. But you really got to feel, you know, if they're biting. Yeah, you do feel a whitefish bite. Usually, it's going to knock slack in your line a little bit, but you know, it's it's once you catch one or two, it's really easy. Do you pay for it? What do I pay for what? Uh, yes, I paid. It's uh, Final Cut Pro is what I use. It can tap in slacks, Tom, basically. I should show you guys this here. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see. Well, you want to see how a fish feels when they bite? Yeah. Well, let me see if I can back this up a little bit. Thanks, Kelly. Look at this. I'm showing him where it is. Boop, he just bit. Need a Meigs. Choked it. Same fish tries to go back again. Eats it again. Oh, you guys didn't see. Eats it again. Can't do that with a Meigs. Goes back down. Setting it up. So, I haven't fully edited this video. Oh, see, that's the first time I see this footage. Look at this. Look at this white fish acting like a... Look how, what he's attracting by. The big Apex 100, man. That's, that's the bait to get him in. And you know what sucks is... Casper is none, so he's going to get whooped on Sunday. And I know where you're going fishing, boy. I must have caught that whitefish because I dropped that break down there. Yeah, I caught that whitefish. Oh, yeah. Look at the amount of fish on that. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. What's up, guys? See you. Well, it's pretty cool, man. I don't get to, to come. I don't get to see all the footage till I get home. I got some other footage, maybe I, maybe, so here's what I do when I come home from a day fishing. 
hold on. Uh, really, I didn't upload all that stuff yet. So this one I haven't watched yet. This one I haven't watched yet. This underwater footage at all. But. You can see, oh, there's a fish right there. You see him come through? See, they weren't on a feeding pattern right there. So I marked one fish there. Yeah, guys claiming 50 fish a morning. I have 10 guys with them. But yeah, there's definitely double digit days out there, 100%. Look at him go for the Thule perch. Oh, did you see that? Nipped at it. And then I stopped moving the Thule perch. And I'm like, come here, bro. Come here, bro. You're going to get Caspered. There you go. Hey, bro, you, you can't do that with a Meeks. First time I see this footage, guys. See, I got to show tricks to Casper. Casper is going to have a Thule perch tied on now. Four lines in one hut. Yeah, you're confusing the fish more than anything. Look, bro, look. We're going to answer your question right now. You can say your question right now. Attracted him with the Thule perch. As soon as I realize he's not into the Thule perch that much. Okay, you don't want it. I'm not moving it no more. I leave the Thule perch down there. And I'm like, okay, come here, bro. You're about to get finessed. You're about to get Caspered. Pop. Pop. There you go, man. Oh, look at this fish going through. Now I'm not moving neither of my bait, so that fish is like, whatever. You're going to confuse the fish more than anything, but bro, don't listen to me. If you're if you're going to go out there with a buddy and two in a hut, it is what it is, man. We've done it, but to me, it's not for me. I love looking at that footage. So that was obviously either... So that's the first time I see this footage. I don't remember this day. Did you guys see that? Look, 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 look. That's pretty cool. Look at this little critter. You tell me a, a Meeg swims like this? And sits like this on bottom, like this is this, this this is sitting. Look, my, there's a fish there right there too. By the way, as soon as the goby sees it, that's right there. He's like, I'm gone. That's how a drifter sits on bottom. Woo. Woo. Look at that goby just went down as soon as he's seen it. As soon as this, as that as soon as that goby saw the white fish over here, he's like, "I'm gone." Not sure you your question about the drifter needs to fix their resin. It's the perfect softness, man. Perfect softness, my dude. Too soft. You want it to be soft to get action, man. Nope. You can't make it stiffer. You can't make just the head stiffer. That means you need a stiffer body. Your bait doesn't swim as right. Okay. This is done.
Kevin, I don't want to argue with you, but that's a Peter question, and I've seen him pour, and there's reason, and there's tons of prototype that goes out before. That's exactly how he wants it. You don't pour the head first, then that means you can only have one color in the head, and you can have other colors in the in the bait. It's 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 very complicated process, man. Exactly. If you just make the head stiffer, what happens is you're gonna have to, your process is gonna be so hard, man. You would have uh, so many things. You would need to change your. You'd have basically three different kind of plastas out to make it tougher at the front. So anyway, but I haven't seen this footage. Ooh. See, I'm not paying attention here, but look, look, a white fish comes up like a lake trout. And that guy confuses a lot of guys. He's like, Ooh, hello. You guys, you guys usually would not see this. Obviously I'm not paying attention. I'm on my phone there. I'm like Casper. Oh, you guys get to, to see a lot of stuff. Other people usually don't. Hey, Casper, Casper, Casper. See, that's the first time I see this. Woo. Did you say, what did you say, bro? He tasted it. He's like, mm-mm. Mm-mm. I, I ain't leaving now. I'm going to go see that French boy up there. Captured. Look at that Gobi. Look at that Gobi. Hey, you see him sitting there? I know Casper, man. I'm just messing with you. Look at that. Look at look at that. You see how he swims? You see how he sits? I don't know, man. That's it. That those are questions you gotta ask Peters, my friends. But so this is one. One Gobi. And he's, this fish is right here. This could be other gobies here. Boom. Man, some cool stuff on here. I'm watching videos up here. See? See, you guys don't see all that stuff. Me just chilling. Deep, 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 deep. Anyway, so there's a lot of footage, man. Like, you guys don't see all that stuff. Uh-oh. I just got an email. We're going to open my emails here. Hold on. We're going to turn this around. We're going to turn this around. This is uh, top secret. Top secret. What do you think? Oh my God. Oh man. So that's other things like, I can't show you guys this. I want to so bad. I created the Canadian Tackle Store. Super proud of this. I designed some stuff that's all like, the way I want, super proud of this. I got a podcast, super proud of this. I got a YouTube channel. I got the best fans, the best subscribers, the best followers. Super proud of that. This, you know, this is something I'm super proud of. For sure, it's not first place. Super proud of that. But this right here, oh man, I can't show you guys, but I'm equally as proud of this this is uh this is pretty cool so this week after work it's pretty cool because that company is in japan so 
they're just waking up. They're not waking up right now, but he just sent me an email. He's working, so I get to work with him when I get home from work. And uh, I signed something with these guys, and it's huge for me. And it's not even a winter bait. What? It's not even a winter bait. It's big. It's a bait that's already out there, but it's going to be exclusive to the Canadian Tackle Store. We ain't selling it anywhere else. We're not selling it to other stores. It's exclusive for you guys, and it's designed for around here. I don't know if you guys fish in the summer, but there's only 100 you guys right now. There'll be a few thousand watching these videos later. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah, so pretty pumped to show you guys this when it's going to come out so it's going to come out it's going to be i think i think you guys should see something in a, in in early may early may but i'm pumped man i'm replying to him right now Wow. So I just replied to that. I'm sorry about that. Uh, we're going to talk about the meet and greet, guys. I I want to do it, but I need, I need some help. I need some help from friends. So, guys, not a big news until I tell you guys. Yes, I use the flat. I still use the flatheads. Uh, the, the flat eddy jigs are great, but I still use the half heads as well. I use both. I use both, but if I'm only fishing whitefish, I'm using the flatty jigs. Yes, and I I'm pretty sure LB's using it in the LB Gobi, which, by the way, uh, by the way, uh, we have at the Canadian Tackle Store. I know I'm pushing. Um. Uh, there's the LB Gobi, obviously, for, from Lady Bass, but uh, Dave at Angler's Choice made 20 packs of two custom colors, and there's only 20 packs, and they're on the store. That's it. That's all you get. And I we sold half of them already. There's one that's glow in the dark uh, called Toxic Glow, and the other one's Dark Gobi. And uh, there's only 20 packs, so. What's on there, I can tell you right now. What's left on there. Uh, I can tell you, oh, I'm on it right now. Oh, there's a picture right here. So, see, that's the Albi Gobi. And then there's the Toxic Glow. And that's when it's glowing. Glowing in the dark. It's pretty cool. And uh, that's the new black, new uh, black goby. But there is toxic glow. Uh, I'm not sure. I have to go check somewhere else. Hold on. I don't use the swivel. I I used to when I, I used to fish deeper, like 60 feet or deeper, but I, I don't anymore. I don't. Ooh. A uh, product. Yeah, it'll do less twirls. There's about 17 packs of each left. 
We actually had 22 packs, not 20, I'm sorry. What do you mean, Paul, the big ones? Yeah, the meat works, man. I'm not knocking the Meegs. James Meager's a good guy. I'm not knocking it at all. It's obviously a staple bait for whitefish. I don't care what anybody says. It's definitely a staple bait for whitefish. But I've helped. Peter doesn't like when I say that. I've helped greatly in the designing the drifter. Uh, I had a lot of back and forth whether Peter took my advice or not. I was the first guy to catch fish with the drifter in the prototype and you, there's a video out there of me trying those bait it was not even the it, it was the final product but it didn't get an okay till everything went well and went nuts peter had only a couple packs he, he he was insane and since then he's hired an employee just to do the drifter it's pretty cool so yes i'm using the drifter that's what i like um i was involved with it and i pride in it uh, and it works. Meigs, it works. They, they lipless works. See, I love the drifter. That's what I use. But if I could choose the bait to catch them in, lipless all day, all day, all day. One of them bad boys, all day. It attracts them. You can finesse them. You can fish them on bottom. You can fish it aggressively. It does everything you need to do. If you need one bait in your light. Ice fishing doesn't matter for what. Look, this. This my boy. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. Lipper. Oh, somebody's at the door. What the hell? The comments I read on here are funny. One of my viewers. I'd be creepy, guys. Don't do that. The Meeks's work the same way, but the Meeks's work consistently on bottom. And it's a, he a bit heavier bait. It's I, I think the Meeks is more of a, even more of a finesse than a drifter. But guys, man, get a Meeks, get a drifter, get an LB Gobi. Hell, fish with a dead raccoon on the side of the road. You guys be safe out there this weekend. Thanks for the support on King Taco Store. Get your merch because we got to pay the bills so I can get more videos like this. And stay tuned. I should have a video up next soon. Do you want to see a fish uh, catch and cook? Or do you want to see how I cook my white fish? Or do you want to see one of the sickest machine for ice fishing that I got to see that my buddy got? Or you want to see just straight underwater footage. Let me know. Comment down below. We will see you guys on the ice.